Hi everyone, Budget Stark here. Thanks again for tuning in. Today's video, we're going to be talking about display cabinets. How I prefer to set up my displays for my figures. And I'm going to cover four, I feel, as important things to consider when displaying your figures. Now, I know majority of people use Detoffs and display cabinets. There are some, obviously, that's leave their figures out in the open. Some of these points may not apply because obviously you're not putting them behind a, a glass cabinet or a detoff or a detoff, however you want to call it. But there will be some points that I feel may be suitable and that you may find useful. So the first thing I'm going to cover is the actual type of doors you can use. These are the normal swing open doors and it's held at the top with a magnet and then just open forward like that. The other ones are slide open doors where at the bottom here you have these two sort of uh, grooves or railings that slide the door this way or slide the door that way. It's down to personal preference. I prefer the opening doors purely because if I want to take a photo with a large number of the figures open like that, you can have both doors open and you can get a good clean shot without any reflection on half of the display cabinet. Again, down to personal preference. One thing you do need to be aware of, which I know some debt off collectors have that have them displayed in there, there's gonna be a groove in the center here. And that allows dust and other particles to get in. So what some people have done is use a weather strip in the center or at the corner. So the edges, for example here, where you have a gap, I've seen some collectors use weather strips which you can buy from something like Robert Dias or other type of hardware stores. The next point is backdrops. I've tried a significant number of backdrops from having a photo at the back to having a mirrored effect, having a light background and having a black background. My overall final preference after trying all of those is, is actually a black background. The mirrored is quite nice because then you can actually see the back of the figure. The only problem is when you have a mirrored one is that if you take photos you get a obviously a reflection seeing what's well, you're seeing yourself in the photo. And when you do take photos, if you use a flash or if you have reflection from the light, that tends to get in the way. Light background is fine also. It's down, again, to personal preference. Another major point that I like with a dark background is that if you use a display or a dynamic stand, the pole, which is predominantly black, is much better hidden with a black backdrop or a black background. So that's the reason why I have that particular preference to black background. Again, down to personal preference, I know many collectors like to have a certain backdrop for their figures. If you've got a Batman figure, you like to see maybe a Batman signal behind, etc. Now getting on to the two important points that I feel out of these four, the height of the shelves. If you have Detoffs, they all come as standard as 17 or 16 inches. I think it's nearer 16 inches. Which means you can fit in the figures quite easily because we're looking at 12 inch figures, but some you will have problems like the Mark 38 or the Hulk. You can't fit in, for example, the Hall of Armor House Party Protocol version because those are 17 inches. So you may need to have something different. What collectors have done is use what I believe are called U-bolt attachments, which can raise your, your shelf height to whatever you feel is appropriate. By doing that, it means you can have, for example, an extra tier and it's not so high up or touching the head. It means you can put in the Hall of Armors or even the Mark 38s in there, and the gantry will fit in quite easily. However, the width of them may be an issue. So I think for shelf heights, if you're using a debt off, you can use the U-bolt to increase the height. If you're doing a custom, which I know some collectors are starting to, to think of, or using even bester shelves from Ikea, the height of around 17 inches I think is ideal. You've got your 12 inch figures here, 
even with the base you're looking at 12 and a half inches and then you've got about four inches or so as height leeway which means you can have a second tier behind slightly raised and that's not an issue or if you want to use a dynamic stand you've got lots of headway there as well what I do suggest with shelf height if you can have a shelf height as a main display area that's slightly higher than the rest and I would recommend about 21 or 22 inches if you can have that space I plan to use this space for the Hulk Buster and the quarter scale Mark 45 I have my Mark 43 here already and it's going to be my main centerpiece section another point about height of shelves is that I feel the bottom section of a display cabinet is very difficult to view figures from and I feel it's more dead space so for those who have debt offs I've seen people raise them Diffuse NL has a really nice video on how he's raised the particular figures because what I do with this two and a half foot space is actually use them to store all my boxes so that's what I've got there essentially a a big cabinet at the bottom with the figures above at 22 inches is the lower shelf the middle and the top shelf height wise we're looking at 17 and a half inches for them both so that's how I've laid my particular cabinet out I know for those who are debt offs you don't have much of a choice but I'll strongly consider using those u-bolts to increase the height of the figures for the last section, I believe this is the single most important thing for your display cabinets, and that's lighting. I've had display cabinets or display setups without the proper lighting, and I feel they don't look as good at all. I've known great figures look mediocre with poor lighting, and mediocre figures look excellent with good lighting. Now it's down to personal preference in terms of lighting and what type of lights, but I have a few recommendations which I would strongly suggest. The first thing is that I would always suggest using LED lighting rather than standard bulbs. For two reasons. One, they last longer and don't really blow. The secondly, your paints won't be degraded or faded with LED lights compared to standard lights. However, all paints will degrade at some degree, whether it's sunlight, which is the worst, normal light bulbs, which are not good, but LEDs still will fade the paint very slightly, but not noticeable, I believe. I mean, my figures have been housed in LED lights for four years, and I don't really notice any paint degradation at all. So that's the first thing, the type of LEDs or type of lighting you want to use. Second thing is the color of your lights. Now I use a white light on a metal housing across the front and the back and the sides. Color of the lights you can use the sort of warm yellow or a warm white. I've seen people use colored lights, green, blue. As I said before, down to personal preference, I prefer the white because it doesn't distort the color of the original paint app. The next point is where do you position the lights? I've seen people position lights directly above the figure, behind it, in front of it, from below shooting upwards. Below shooting upwards, I feel, gives uh, a shadow on the head sculpt and you can't see a lot of detail, purely because of the angle of which you're shooting from. Lighting from behind, you don't see the front as much. So I always prefer slightly in front and slightly behind, and if possible at the sides to give a good all round lighting for the particular figure. Finally, the Hall of Armors. If you decide to pl display your Iron Man in Hall of Armors, the lighting of which it of which they were designed for makes a huge difference. So I'm going to show you here how it looks without the lights on and this is with the lights on. Much more vibrant, 
distinct and clear and you can really see the paint apps shining through. So if you do have a Hall of Armour and you have them set up, switch the lights on if you can, use the remote systems that I've talked about, uh, maybe even Soap Reactor that I have some of these linked up to, or just a normal remote system to a USB hub to control all the lights for them. But that's pretty much all I wanted to go through for this sort of quick discussion about how I like my display cabinets set up in terms of the overall look, light, backdrops, height of shelves, etc. Hope you guys found that useful. Thanks for watching and catch you all at the next video.